Hello in the game fans! As mentioned, so many great indie games were released in October 2019, so let's kick off the video with Warsaw, also known as World War II Darkest Dungeon. Set during the Warsaw Uprising, play as a band of resistance fighters killing Nazi scum. This is a weird one because it is not in early access and it got a mixed reception during launch due to how dragged out combat felt. But with subsequent patches in the weeks since then, the momentum has begun to shift on this. On top of the art and combat zoom-ins, which again screams Darkest Dungeon, much like the previously covered Mist Over, this has you travelling the bombed out streets of Warsaw. There is a resistance home base to manage, as well as new recruits and named party members, and I think that it's still worth a look with more free content incoming as well. Lonely Mountains Downhill is a single player time trial racer with a wonderful low poly look. It is all about racing down mountains as quickly as you can, with the opportunities to discover and exploit shortcuts when going down. This has quite an interesting gameplay structure, having you play through the course first, then adding objectives to complete the level within a certain amount of time, or with less than a certain number of crashes, then once those are complete, adding even more objectives and so on, making you replay the level over and over again to gain familiarity and understanding of the course. These objectives unlock customization options for your character and bike, but of course, the main draw here will be the leaderboard chase. The home release of Killer Queen Black is an all-around good time, supporting up to 8 players locally in 4v4 combat. A competitive arcade experience, this has multiple ways to win with military, economic or snail, so it is constant action as you strive for your method of victory while keeping a close eye on your opponent. It is well designed and pretty awesome, although of course, having other people around is a must. But Steam's new Remote Play Together feature certainly opens up the possibilities. Platform fighters are all the rage, with Super Smash Bros. having quite a significant impact on indie developers, and Roof Rage is the latest title to do so. A martial arts focused one of these with awesome, clean looking pixel art, this has a nice variety of 13 characters, from a sumo wrestler, ninja, boxer and more. And it even has quite an in-depth training mode to get you up to speed. A shoot 'em up where you are unable to fire projectiles of your own, Sky Racket is one part brick breaker and one part side scrolling shooter, all wrapped up with a wholesome cartoony look. Levels are structured in a 3 stars fashion, having objectives like completing the level, not getting hit, destroying all of a certain enemy type and so on, but some levels do have up to 5 of these, giving you some incentive to go back and replay levels. Super cute and charming and gets a thumbs up from me. The wonderful Felix the Reaper is a puzzle game where you play as a reaper working in the Ministry of Death, where you have to place creatures and people in the wrong place at the wrong time, in order to reap their souls as per orders given by the Ministry. However, you must avoid the sunlight and stick to the shadows, so there is a mechanic that allows you to change the position of the sun. Picking up and placing objects for them to cast the shadow is then one of the critical things to learn with macabre and silly ways for people to die. It is well polished, with awesome art and absolutely fantastic dancing animations. If you, like me, fell in love with Gen 1 Pokemon, this creatures will certainly be of interest to you. One part Pokemon and one part Monster Ranger, this has you taming over 200 this creatures, but you do not catch wild ones, but rather create a clone using a disc. You also have a party of 3 creatures in battle at the same time, giving it just a little bit of that Dragon Warrior Monsters feel, so yes, yes and yes for me.
Rise to Ruins would perhaps be secretly the best base building game out there since this is a challenging god game where you have to build a village, harvest resources, build defenses and to survive. Having been in early access for many years, this finally hit version 1.0 but the developer is not stopping there, promising to continue to update the game with new free content until people stop playing. This is pretty mechanically dense in terms of the production chains that you need to set up, from wood, stone, food and more, where wooden locks have to be further refined into wooden boards, towers require ammo, farms, water and so on. Just jumping in can be pretty overwhelming and I certainly advise for you to put it on an easier difficulty before ramping things up with there even being meta progression elements as you unlock and complete objectives and increase your overall god level with some sort of prestige system in play as well. Really densely packed with content and I can't say enough good things about this. Zeno Crisis is Smash TV Reborn, an arena action twin stick shooter where you play as marines confronting an alien threat. This was successfully crowdfunded for the Sega Genesis of all things and undeniably nails that 16 bit look. The areas are also procedurally generated, giving that replayability. And there are even upgrades from dog tags that you obtain off slain enemies. Perhaps the exact polar opposite of Disco Elysium, this is that shooty shooty bang bang fun that I was talking about and really is pretty darn good. Zeno Crisis. If you love setting up production lines in games like Factorio, Little Big Workshop will be your next fix. Take on orders from the customers and the market, ranging from shelves, rubber ducks, bicycles, pitchforks, bongos, teddy bears and more, as you purchase machines, designate storage areas and watch your factory run. It is immensely satisfying, especially when certain items have multiple parts and stages to them. So it is all about optimization and making your factory bigger and better. As you deliver items, you level up and gain research points, allowing you to expand your factory, unlock specializations for your workers and new methods of production, which results in such a compelling gameplay loop. The hours flew by as I played this game, taking the number one spot of the month. For more indie games you might have missed, check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.